So I'm hoping that everyone can see just the introductory slide on the screen there and let us make a start. So thanks again for, for joining us. Uh, thanks for your interest in, in the program. Uh, SEDEP uh, is part of the University of London system. University of London has uh, a huge number of students all over the world. At the moment, something like 55,000 students study by distance with the University of London, many of them undergraduate, but um, lots of them also postgraduate. SOAS is one of the so-called lead colleges that provides distance learning programs under the University of London umbrella. University of London has uh, well over 150 years of experience of online learning um, to draw on. SARIS is actually the largest provider of postgraduate programs within the University of London. There are three programs uh, that are run out of SOAS. Uh, there's ourselves, Centre for Development, Environment and Policy. There's the Centre for Finance and Management Studies and Centre for International Studies and Diplomacy. So just within SOAS, we also handle a large number of students in a large number of countries. SEDEP programs. Uh, there are five of them currently. Um, we do withdraw programs and we do introduce new programs uh, as we go along. So no program is there permanently. Um, our two biggest programs at the moment are sustainable development, which I think was introduced in the early 2000s and poverty reduction, which was introduced in 2009. Um, and we have three other programs which have been going on for, for longer than that, environmental management economics and agricultural economics. We are uh, very much hoping to launch a climate change and development program uh, from the autumn of this year. We talk mainly about our MSCs, but actually you can study individual modules with us as individual professional awards. You can study um, specific combinations of those to get a postgraduate certificate in any of the five programs I've just mentioned. You can study eight modules to get a postgraduate diploma, or you can uh, study eight modules and the dissertation in order to complete a master's. So the fees are basically uh, £1,050 per module. So ultimately you need nine for an MSc, which takes you to 9,450. Uh, and you pay as you go. So unlike on campus where you have to basically pay almost everything up front, here if you take a couple of modules in your first year, then you just pay for those two modules. And as you take more, you pay. So it means you can spread your cost of your MSc over your entire registration program, um, your entire registration uh, period. I've just realised that my slides are skipping, so I'm jumping back on slides. And this slide tells you about the registration period. Um, if you're studying just individual modules, um, so this, yes, if you're studying individual modules, I think you get two years in which to do it. Um, we have two terms which I should tell you about. The main study session starts in February and, and runs through to exams at the end of September, but there's a sort of accelerated track, which is what many of you might now be interested in, I guess, which starts in May and again runs through to the same exam period. So you basically take the same materials, whether you start in February or in May, but doing that sort of twice the speed if you're starting in May. And so we would normally advise you to take one or two modules in May, whereas if you start in February, you can take three or four um, if you want to. Uh, to um, if you're registering for an MSc programme, you will be given a five year registration period in which to complete your nine modules. Um, the most common uh, 
time for completion is three years. A minority of students complete in two. Some do take their five. And in fact, there is provision in our regulations, if you haven't quite finished in five, to have one extra year on top of that as well. So you have to decide how long you want to take. And obviously, the quicker you want to do it, the more hours per week you have to find in order to be able to do that. Um, for a postgraduate diploma, uh, you also have a five-year registration period for a postgraduate certificate, ditto, um, although you can finish it in one year. What you get if you do study with us uh, is that you get course guides uh, sent to you. Uh, in fact, nowadays you get your key readings sent to you and your textbooks sent to you, but all the materials that we have written for you are available via our virtual learning environment. Uh, you can either study them online or you can download them and study them at your leisure. Um, you receive a, uh, you get a dedicated tutor and a discussion forum for each module where you can ask questions or join in debate about topics that are in the course materials. Uh, the tutor can also answer any particular questions that you have. Uh, we run webinars for every module, so typically in the course of a study session there will be maybe three sets of webinars, an introductory one, uh, then there'll be at least one on some part of the study materials that you want to, uh, that we, we think we'd like to take you through, and there will be an exam preparation webinar just before the exams in the, in the latter part of September. Right. At the moment, students get access to the University of London online library. Uh, we have to say that's not the strongest part of our, of our program provision. Um, we are looking to get you full access to the online resources of the SOAS library, which is a much richer collection um, of journals and ebooks for the topics that we cover. That will be, we hope, up and running for the February 2018 study session. And one of the things in our program is if you have over a thousand people, many of them quite experienced professionals, uh, studying together, there are really good opportunities for networking with other students through the discussion fora um, for our different modules, and then you take that on yourselves um, after you've got to know people on the discussion forum. The way we assess our um, our courses for every module, there is an assignment which either uh, happens at the end of June or happens at the beginning of August. That's worth 20% of the mark. And then there's an exam which is worth 80% of the mark. Let me take those in turn. The assignment, if you're registering for a module in May, then your assignment will be due on the 1st of August. If you're registering for some of the modules in February, then the assignment will be uh, due at the end of June. Uh, and you get eight to 10 weeks where the assignment is available on our online learning environment. You can have a look at it. You can make your preparations for it. In fact, we only expect it to take you about 15 hours, which may be one week of your study time. But we give you eight to 10 weeks because we know that people have busy work lives and they travel. They have other things going on. So somewhere in the eight to 10 weeks, you find time to, to submit the assignment. Uh, the exam is a little bit less flexible. Um, and the exam timetable is already published. Um, it is available certainly on our virtual learning environment. I'm not sure if it's available on the website. But in the last two weeks of September, each module has an exam date. Uh, the exam can be taken in an approved University of London Centre in almost any country in the world. Um, but you do have to be there for the particular day that the exam is set because we can't set exams on multiple dates. Otherwise, papers can get spread around and people can study it first and pass the papers on to others. So you do have to check out the exam date for your particular module. OK, we've talked about the study sessions. Um, if you are looking to them, start on the May study session now, your application deadline for us is the 31st of March. And we will turn that around fairly quickly and then we look for you to enroll a couple of weeks later. 
the next um, study session then starts in February 2018 and the application deadline will be sometime in March for that. The next slide shows you where our, um, our students are based. Um, as you will see, we have plenty of students based in Europe. It, the distribution of students varies actually by program. Um, so environmental management, for example, I think there are more in Europe than some of our other programs. In the poverty reduction program, there are more in Africa and Asia than will be given by this overall distribution. But the main point to show you is that we have students from all over the world. I think we have them in 100 plus countries just in SEDEP alone. Many of our students are already in work. Um, well, I can talk a bit more about that in response to questions. Um, But, um, so I'm just getting distracted by the chat there. Many of our students are already in work, but these are some of the organisations that our students either are working with or might look to go and work with afterwards. We have lots of students in international organisations. We have plenty of students in NGOs. We have, uh, in the programme I'm personally responsible for, poverty reduction, we have many students looking to move into development-related subjects from a whole range of backgrounds, including uh, various commercial private sector, law, education, um, looking to get into development work. So we have a wide range of backgrounds and experience on the programme and also to contribute to discussion on the discussion forum. Here are um, uh, just a couple of testimonies from students who've recently uh, finished with us saying what they like about the programmes. One of the things I think we pride ourselves on in particular is the very strong course materials that we send to you. Lots of work goes into preparing high quality course materials that cover quite a broad range of topics, introduce you to current debates, introduce you to literature and lead you through those uh, those topics. So just a reminder, if you're looking to start in May, our application date is uh, 31st of March. Um, and uh, we look forward to receiving applications from some of you. So thank you for those of you who have already put some questions in, which Beth is gathering for me as, as I've been talking. Um, so I'm going to now turn to your questions and start answering them broadly in the order that they've come in. Uh, and then please feel free to keep posting questions on the chat function whilst I talk and answer the questions that are coming in. So the first one, um, NT, could Colin say something about the likelihood of climate change and development indeed being run? That's a really good question. So. Uh, we are confident that it will be running. Uh, it was actually approved, albeit after a delay, early last year. And the uh, uncertainty has been exactly the format that it's going to be run in. We are making a proposal to our internal approval processes within SOAS next month for a new format for this program which will actually involve you taking fewer modules but each module carrying a higher credit rating than is the case in our current programs and if we get approval for that that is how we will run it and we will still be looking to start in the uh, in the autumn well i say in the autumn probably in october the reason for some of this uncertainty is that SOAS uh, has been looking to achieve greater harmonization across its three distance learning programs, which I mentioned earlier. And it's taken a while, but it looks like we're getting agreement on a common format. Uh, and that's likely for new programs, as I said, to mean fewer modules, two entry points in the year, October and April, um, and programs that fit uh, that arrangement. If we get that confirmed, we will know it by the beginning of May, and then we will announce it first and foremost, uh, firstly for the Climate Change and Development Programme, and we'll make that available on our website. 
So, Marcia, I would like to apply to the Masters in Poverty Reduction. If I apply in May, I understand my assignments are due on 1st of August. Do I need to take exams for the three core modules in September 2017? So, first of all, yes, you're correct about the assignment deadline for all modules for which you start in May. The deadline for the assignment is uh, the 1st of August. Um, now, do you need to take the exams for the three core modules in September? So this uh, takes us um, to the question of how fast you want to study. You have to do nine modules to complete an MSc. You have five years to do it. You can do it in as few as two and as many as five years, and that's up to you. If you're going to go through at the most common pace for our students, which is to aim to finish in three years, then you would normally look to finish three modules in your first year. However, if you're starting in May, three modules is quite a big ask. And I would probably suggest that you try and do two in May um, and see how you get on. Um, and then in one year, you'll aim to do four modules rather than three, if you're aiming to finish in the three years. Emma, some materials have said a May start and some June. Does it depend which module you're picking up? Emma, thank you for picking up on that. I assume, therefore, that our website is still a bit inconsistent on this. Um, the answer is that up to a couple of years ago, it was always June. We've actually moved it to May. It should always now say May, and there's obviously one or two places where we haven't picked that up and corrected from June to May. Um, the correct answer is now May start, although it's normally about the last week in May. I think it's 20 something of May when we start. So May is the answer for that one. Brenda, if one takes two modules in May, um, it means in October you have to sit the two exams. When does the next module start? Before the results or after you get the results? Okay, so um, two questions there. Um, if you take two modules in May, we hope that you proceed to sit both exams. Uh, I should say the exams are the second half of September. Um, so you've put October, but they should be it's the second half of September. Um, just to say, if you are unable to sit the exam, you can defer a module at no cost. So you don't lose money if you're not able to sit the exam, although obviously we want to help as many people as possible to sit the exams. When do the next modules start? Is it before the results or after you get the results? The next modules actually don't start until February. Um, our exam processes mean that the marking happens in October, after you've sat the exams at the end of September. Um, they then, after they've been marked by two internal markers, they a se selection is then sent to external examiners to check the quality of our marking to make sure you can be absolutely confident of the quality of the marking. And it's, uh, therefore it's end of November when we have our formal exam board, when the, all the examiners sit with the external examiners and approve all the marks that have been awarded and then the students are notified by the University of London in the first 10 days of December. And that's before the deadline for registering for the next study session. So if you want to wait until you've got your exam results, you can do so. You have a fairly quick turnaround um, if you do that, but you do still have time to reflect on your results and apply for your next modules. If you want to, and you're confident of moving forward onto new modules, you can register for new modules even before you've got your exam results. And we are hoping this year to make study materials available fairly soon after you register. So the advantages of registering early might be that you get to start reading through your module materials for your next session early if you register earlier. Emma again. Will sustainable land management still run throughout 2018? 
Now, Emma, I haven't got access to the website here, um, but I think that that is one of the modules where we have announced that the last exam will be in 2018. Um, and assuming that that is the case, I think it's one of three where we've announced the last exam will be in 2018, uh, that the module will run throughout the year. Um, there will be tutor support um, and everything you need to study, but it will be your last chance to sit the exam in 2018. So uh, I think that's a yes. If you have any further questions on that, put them into chat and we'll get back to you. But if, if we've said last exam 2018, the module will run throughout the 2018 session. Uh, in Canada and MSc will be very science and math based. Um, okay, so you're saying is that does do we should we read much into the fact that this is called an MSc rather than an MA? Um, actually, I don't think you should read too much into the fact that it's called an MSc. Um, so our economics programs obviously are have a reasonable amount of maths and theory, but all of our programs are, in, are at the applied end of the spectrum where, where, where MSCs are concerned. It's very much about the application of knowledge to current debates, current practical policy issues. So we give you as much theory as we think will be helpful for you to inform your thinking about debates, but we are not pushing theory for theory's sake. Uh, we also have people from a very wide range of backgrounds coming into some of our programs. So poverty reduction, which is your example, is quite uh, a broad program. We have people from a range of professional backgrounds and a range of first degrees coming in. Um, and therefore, we don't make it too um, maths based. It's helpful to have a core of maths, but in the UK education system, I would say that we don't require any maths of you which goes beyond what you would take in your public exams when you're 16, so GCSEs in the UK. It's not a level maths requirement, for example, it's not high school, it's not the maths you would need at 18, it's the maths at 16 is really what we ask for. Um, if you have more than that, you will get more out of some of the key readings, because obviously there are readings which involve maths more than that. But in terms of what we expect you to take out of those readings, you, they're still accessible to you, even if you don't have all of that maths. We're not going to test you on your maths in the exam questions. Imelda. Please could you confirm how much online, tut online contact time per week is available with a tutor? So Melda, our discussion fora online are what we call asynchronous. That means they're open all the time and you are able to post your contributions and your questions at any time. And the tutor is supposed to um, be monitoring it and over the 30 weeks if you start in February or the 16 weeks if you start in May, um, every two to three days maximum they should get they should be on there making sure that they have got back to you and kept the discussion going and answered your questions so it's really quite open-ended it's however much time you want to make available the things that are um, more specified are the webinars which are synchronous like this so everyone has is online at the same time um, because of the difficulties of finding a time and works for everyone. Their webinars are optional. Um, and we, for each session we run, we try and run it two or three times to allow for differences in time zones. So we might do one, uh, which is breakfast time in the UK, uh, which caters for people in Australia and New Zealand and part of East Asia. We'll do one about this time of day. And we'll do one in the evening UK time, which might uh, cater for people in the US and Canada um, unless they want to join us at their breakfast time. So um, two or three of those a year, but the 
online tutor contact time is asynchronous and it's open for you to post questions and request things at any time you want. Um, for other, looking at the MSC environmental management, are there any available funding opportunities to help with fees? Now, Farah, I'm afraid this is something that um, we do not uh, score that highly on compared to some places. Um, we have not in my time had any funding specifically uh, to help people on the MSC environmental management. In the past, we have managed through a competitive bidding process to get some scholarships for poverty reduction, but actually we haven't got any of those this year. Um, for environmental management, I'm afraid you are looking at your employer or family and friends um, for funding. If you're a UK student, you are entitled to take out a UK student loan to study on our programmes. You can get a loan of up to £10,000, which therefore covers all of the programme costs. That's something the UK government has introduced for UK-based students. And this is the first year in which that's happened. But if you're outside the UK, I'm afraid you will have to look for your own funding for environmental management. Paul, is the cost of postage worldwide of course materials included in course fees? And can material be sent to different addresses over the course of the programme? So the answer to both of those questions is yes. Uh, as long as you keep us up to date with where you're living and where you need your course materials sent, in principle every year you could have a different address and you would still get your course materials sent to you. In the same way, you can attend a different exam centre each year if you happen to be in a different country at exam time. As long as when you register for the exam, you say which country you're looking to uh, take the exam in, um, that one of the strengths of the University of London system is all of that is very flexible for you. Claudia, by the way, I'm hoping I'm uh, pronouncing your names correctly here. What is the maximum number of courses I can do if I'm starting in May? Um, so, we have had somebody do, I believe, four modules in May. We, they, we gave them special dispensation for that. They demonstrated to us that they'd taken time off work. They were effectively studying full time um, from May through to September, and they did four modules. If you're not doing that, we would recommend that you do two in May. Uh, taking two in May is equivalent to taking four in September, which is, uh, sorry, four in February, which is quite a significant uh, workload um, but if you want to persuade us that you have more time available the program convener can give you permission to take more modules so let me just go through very briefly how we uh, assess the workload if you are taking a module starting in February it's a 30 week course it's a 30 week study session our modules carry 15 credits towards your MSc, where an MSc is 180 credits. Um, fifth, each credit is supposed to be 10 hours, so a 15 credit module is supposed to be 150 hours study. So if you are studying over a 30 week period, we expect you to be finding about five hours per week per module between February and um, September. If you're starting in May, you're doing it in half the time, and therefore we, you need to be able to find about 10 hours per week per module that you've enrolled for. So if you have 20 hours a week available, take two modules in May. Um, and then I'll say, if you can show that you're actually not in full employment during this period and you have more than 20 hours a week you can devote to study, we would let you take more modules, but you will have to convince us that you really do have time for that and that you understand that it is quite a big time commitment. Dana, I'm enrolled in the PG Cert Poverty uh, Reduction starting in May. Um, upon completion, what is the procedure for enrolment in the MSc? Okay, uh, this is another 
um, I think, strength of our system is that it is very easy to upgrade um, from individual professional awards to PG Cert, PG Cert to MSc. Um, what you do is that you show that you have done fine in the um, in the course that you're enrolled for, and then we will simply upgrade you um, at no cost to yourself um, to the next stage of the program. Um, and all the modules that you've completed will just be credited to the new program. So if you've done four modules for the PG cert and you say, actually, I'd like to continue to do an MSc, what you, you don't take the PG cert certificate as an exit award, you choose instead to carry your credits into an MSc and we upgrade you to an MSc registration. So you would typically do it after the exams you would say, look, here I am, I passed my modules, can I switch to an MSc? And if you've passed your modules, we will say yes. Um, I don't want to start the MSc until the following year. Well, um, the new study session only starts in February in Ghana, so the, the, you would start the next study session, which is February. Um, as I've said, when you register towards the end of the year, we're looking to make it possible for you to get your course materials earlier than has been the case in the past, so that you can do some self-study, um, but the official study session won't start till February. So you're not missing out on the thing, that's when everybody's next study session starts. Sure. Um, I've been given a conditional offer to enroll on the Sustainable Development MSc. If a situation arises and I cannot complete all nine modules, would I be able to receive a PG Cert or PG Diploma if I've passed enough core and elective modules? Um, yes, Rachel, you can. We call that an exit award. So um, if you end your five years and you haven't been able to complete all the modules for whatever reason, um, we will look to give you the highest exit award that you qualify for, which could be a PG diploma, could be a PG cert. Um, if you are a module short of getting one of those, we might also um, give you an additional year to complete uh, an appropriate exit award. So um, yes, we're flexible that way, um, as well as flexible in letting you um, move up from a PG cert to a, to a to a MSc, you can also take an exit award which is lower than you originally registered for if that is um, what you need to do. Right, I'm not sure how fast I'm getting through the questions, but I'll just keep going as quickly as I can here. Um, I'd like to ask how many ECTS are awarded the MSc programme and is there a presentation of the dissertation? And if yes, where does it take place? Right, so uh, we tend to talk about our modules in terms of what are called CATS, which are the UK um, credit system. So our programmes are 180 CATS, which is 90 ECTS. So it's a 90 ECTS MSc program. There is not a presentation of the dissertation. Um, you submit it online. So you have a supervisor for the period of your dissertation. You work with your supervisor, you get feedback, you get comments on your drafts, etc. And then you submit it online. It is then marked independently by two markers, again with external examiners seeing a sample of those to make sure that our marking is all fair. Um, but once uh, your dissertation has got its mark, um, that it is as far as the dissertation is concerned, you don't have to do a public defence of it. Uh, Candida says, for MSc in Sustainable Development in May, which two modules should I do? Um, Candida, in a way, you could talk to the module convener about that, who's Ben Daly, um, but we would, we would recommend that normally you do 
two of the core modules, and I would probably suggest you to understanding sustainable development as the compulsory module and one of the others in the core, but you can choose uh, which ones you want to do. Um, Donna, is it possible to receive the study materials before May? I know at this point it won't be, but you, well, you'll get them during May. You'll get them before the start of the actual study session on about the 20th of May, um, but you won't get them a lot before, Donna. When is registration for May? So at, apply by 31st of March. And then uh, enrollment for individual modules is in mid-April. I think the date on the slide that I showed you earlier said 14th of April. And then, of course, it takes a while to uh, courier all your packs out to you in different places. But um, registration is in mid-April. Um, you see on how many hours a week are we expected to spend studying? Um, so I think I've covered that one, but just to say it again, if you're starting in May, we look, uh, we expect you to be able to find about 10 hours per module per week. So if you register for two modules, you'll need to find about 20 hours per week uh, for your studying in May. If you're starting in February, you have twice as long as five hours per module per week. Venti again. Um, I am still uh, early in my career. Have you seen more people who do this? Do you generally suggest people get some experience in the field before they do a distance MSc? Um, actually, we don't have a recommendation here, Venti. What I would say is that uh, there's a difference between the demographic profile of students who study at distance and the demographic profile of students who study on campus. On campus, students tend to be younger, uh, distance students um, often are mid-career, they've done 10 to 15 years work in the field and actually the applied nature of our materials means that you are reflecting on stuff that you are encountering as you, as you work quite often. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a, a minority of our students who are in the 21 to 25 bracket um, and we have people who are looking to get into a career um, rather than people who are progressing through a career or looking to move on within it, um, who are studying with us. So uh, every year we have people who start going pretty much straight from undergraduate, um, and, and that certainly can be done. Um, but we find that the distance format works for people who, as you get a bit further on in your career and you gain professional responsibilities and maybe a house and a family, it becomes more difficult to take a year out and study on campus. And I think that's probably the main driver of why our demographic profile is different from on campus. So when does the enrollment for May uh, students end? So. Uh, I just need to check I've understood the question. If you're saying, when do you have to have enrolled by? Again, it's application 31st of March and registering for modules in the middle of April. I think it was 14th. If you're saying, when does the study session end? It ends with the exam in the second part of September. Joe, when I called, I was informed I'd be able to use a CELAS library and I'd be given a letter to show the library. Um, Yes, Joe, if you are based in UK and are a, or London and are able to get to the library, you can come and be given a letter and then you can use the library physically here. Um, similarly, if you're a student in another country and you're visiting London, you are also are entitled to do that. So uh, yes, that is the case. And Joe, um, as a SEDEP student, you would contact our student support team um, which is a SEDEP admin email address that you use for applications and other things, and they can help you with that. Serena, I'm enrolled for an MSc. Um, will I be able to ask for a PG cert once I finish the required number of modules um, for job seeking before moving on to re read for the rest? So, Serena, the answer to that unfortunately is no. In the University of London system, so this is not just a SOAS or a SEDEP regulation, um, when you complete the PG certificate modules, the first four modules, you have a choice. 
you either take the PG certificate as an exit award, which means that's your registration with a ceasing, or you proceed with your MSc, in which case you don't receive a PG certificate. So I'm afraid um, there's, there are not intermediate awards in the University of London system. You choose either I exit with my award or I continue studying towards um, a bigger award. Yeah, um, greetings. I need to bring my children with me for the final exams. Mm, I've never had that question before, Guillermo, but I, uh, I'm not aware of there being childcare facilities at exam centres. Um, so there, you could ask University of London about that. Um, there is an email address which is something pgug.exams at london.ac.uk. And then people exam centres they run they, they prove and monitor exam centres for the entire University of London system, including SEDEP. They would be able to answer that, but I fear that the answer is no, and you may have to get childcare for the uh, day of your of your exam. Alan, um, you've mentioned that MSc in climate change and development may begin in October. Is the deadline for application also March? No, um, the application will be nearer the time, Alan, because we are still seeking that final approval, which, as I say, we hope to get at the beginning of May for exactly how we're going to run the programme. And then uh, we will announce uh, applications straight after that. So watch the website for that, but it's not going to be by March the 31st. Can you pay by instalments, Kadia? You pay by module. So um, you do have to pay in full for each module that you take. Um, but if you take two modules in one year, you just pay for those two, and then you pay for the next modules the following year when you take those. Marcia, can I take exams in different exam centers in the world? I'm in different locations. Yes, you can take them. Uh, um, in one year, you might be in one country, you take it in the exam centre in the city or cities, whichever, um, uh, in the country you're in, and the next year you may be in a different country and you can register to take your exams in a different location. Um, the important thing is the exam registration deadline is something like the 1st of August, I believe, for an exam in September. So by that point, you have to know which country you want to take your exam in. And as long as you specify it on your application form, um, that will be accommodated. Um, is it possible to complete the MSc in environmental management within two years? So the answer is it is possible to complete our um, our MSCs in two years. Not many students do it because it is plenty of work and as I've explained the hours required already, not that many people have the hours necessary to, uh, to do that. Um, if you were starting in February, the way you would complete in two years would be to take your four core modules and research methods in year one, and you would then take your three optional modules and the dissertation in year two. Um, actually, if you start in May, you will have to take two and a half years. And the reason for that is you have to complete research methods before you start the dissertation and research methods is one you can only register for in February. So if you're looking to start in May, I would look to finish in two and a half years, um, which is still you know, a good, good achievement. Do a couple of modules in May, then in February, uh, do your other two core modules and research methods and if you want to probably also do one optional module, uh, that will look modules. And then in your third year, you do your dissertation and two, your two final elective modules, and that will get you through in two and a half years. Lindsay, is attendance for online webinars and discussions compulsory every week? No. 
Um, so there's not there's nothing compulsory about either the um, webinars or the discussions. Um, we encourage students to participate in both, but the practicalities of the working and busy lives of our students mean very difficult to make it compulsory. So um, no, you can't you join webinars. If you can, you contribute to discussion forums as you can and as you wish. So it's, you're free at any time to post a question. You're free to go and contribute to the discussions, but we um, we can't force you and we don't try. Brenda, can there be can one be able to pick any core modules to start with? Um, or is there a particular order? Okay, so um, each of our programs has specified core modules and, speci and a list of optional modules to take. Um, we don't mind which order you do them in. We do generally recommend that you start with your core modules. Um, I'll explain an exception to that in just a second. Um, but the core modules you can do in any order um, and the electives you can do in any order. So the one exception to that you will have seen, and I've already mentioned earlier in this webinar, that from time to time we announce a withdrawal of modules and then we may introduce new ones. If we announce a withdrawal of a module and it's an optional module that you wanted to take, we would encourage you to take it um, right at the start of your program so that you get to take the module that you want to take. So even if it's an optional module, we would encourage you to take it at the start so you can do that. And then you can do your optional modules alongside it, but you don't finish your, no, you can do your core modules alongside it rather than insisting you do your core modules first and then you miss an option that you really wanted. For the MSc in Sustainable Development, Jasmine, can I only can I take only one module in May, or is there a minimum of two? No, you're absolutely fine to take one module in May, and in May that's you know that's still ten hours a week you're looking for. So um, I would expect many students starting in May to just take the one module. Um, it's only those who really want to get moving fast through their studies who I would recommend take two. Just wondering how employers, especially international organisations, perceive a distance learning degree. Um, so all I can say there, Bent, is we have lots of students in international organisations, as per my uh, one of my slides earlier. So they uh, are very familiar with them. I think our our program has been running for thirty years. It's um, highly respected and in lots of the international organizations that I listed and in others there are plenty of students with SEDEP distance learning MSCs so um, they're well known and um, they are examined to exactly the same standards of rigor as any uh, on-campus University of London programs are exactly equivalent um, and I think many of the international organisations understand that through experience of seeing their staff take these programmes. Courtney, um, okay, two questions here. How many students on average enrol in MSc Agricultural Economics each year? The answer to that, Courtney, is about 25 or so each year. Are there resources for career development, networking with former graduates of the programme or other opportunities? Um, there are possibilities to be part of a SOAS alumnus network. There are um, opportunities, obviously, for getting to know your, your current students. Um, we, the alumni network is something that we are working on. I think we could do more than we currently do, um, but uh, there is a fantastic resource of people out there who are set up graduates and other SAS graduates and we're looking for ways of better linking you in with them. Shinichi, I'm engaged in environmental management certification business. Uh, I was registered. Uh, okay, I'm interested in your MSc in environmental management but I don't have a bachelor degree. So Shinichi, this is a question we get from uh, time to time. Um, 
generally if you don't have a bachelor's degree but you we, you can show that you have some professional experience and uh you know things relevant which which suggest that you probably could study with us we would encourage you to register for one or two of our modules as individual professional awards um, and if you do fine in those we will upgrade you to an msc so um, we're unlikely to give you registration direct to the MSc if you don't have a bachelor's, but we would consider you for one of the lower awards based on your professional experience. And then if you define it, it's a, it's a no cost upgrade um, to proceed to the MSc. Brenda, does SEDEP do summer school? Um, answer at the moment, no, we don't. We are in negotiations, or no, we're in discussions with SOAS. Uh, about running some of our modules next year for summer school as a pilot, um, but that's not been officially announced yet. So the current practice is it's all at distance. Um, but watch this space. You see another exam centers in every country. Um, I believe the answer to that is yes. Uh, there may be some islands somewhere where that's not true. Uh, the University of London uh, International program's website has a list of exam centres that you can go and look at and I think you'll find wherever it is you're interested there will be an exam centre. Cameron, do you have to take one module selected from another program for the full MSc? Um, okay. No you don't. So um, in some of our programmes it says that you are allowed to take a, a free choice of elective module from anywhere in the SEDEP programmes. Um, that's true for agricultural economics, environmental economics and environmental management. But you certainly don't have to. You can just take it all from within the list of the programme that you're interested in. For sustainable development and poverty reduction, it says you can take a free choice from within that particular programme because there's quite a large selection within both the poverty reduction and environmental management programs. But again, you don't have to take one out of your chosen specialist stream. If you're doing poverty reduction and all sustainable development, you can just take a module from, uh, you can just take four in four elective modules from your specialist stream if you want to. Actually, we're getting towards the end here. Mustafa, I've been working for six years in natural resource management. Um, in English environment, and I have studied English individual courses. So, am I fit to postgraduate certificate? So, Mustafa, we would look at your undergraduate qualifications. Um, we certainly take your experience into account. Uh, it counts positively when we look at your applications. Um, I would have thought if you have an undergraduate degree um, and you have your uh, experience that you've listed that you would have no problem getting registration for a postgraduate certificate in environmental management. Sophie, is the online learning environment compatible with all devices? Now, Sophie, that's a technical question that um, I'm not sure that I can give you a totally reliable answer there. Um, can I suggest that you post that question to Sedep admin at soas.ac.uk. That's our uh, support um, uh, student support email. Sedep admin at soas.ac.uk. Um, and they will forward it to our technical people. And I would suggest that you say which devices you're interested in. Okay. Um, and they can confirm for you. Uh, and I hope the answer is yes for you. Um, Farah, I can, so you've now gone on and had a look at some of the exam centres and you say that in Canada you see that some of them are actually universities. Are we affiliated with them? Um, so uh, I think the answer is no, we're not affiliated with them. Uh, what happens is the University of London International Programmes, uh, they are responsible for maintaining uh, a network of exam centres all over the world and they work with willing partners uh, wherever they are. And uh, it's on a purely contractual basis. So it will mean the University of London International Programmes has a contract with that university to act as an exam centre. But I think that's the entire 
entirety of the relationship. There, there isn't an affiliation that goes beyond that. So can you I think okay, this question about payment of installments. As I said again, the you pay per module. When you pay for a module, you do have to pay for the full module. That's one thousand and fifty pounds. Um, but you only pay for each module that you're doing. At the moment, as far as I'm aware, there's no facility for paying part of a module fee at once and uh, uh, part of a module fee at one point and then topping it up. You do have to find the full £1,050 for your module when you want to study that module. So, Farah, I uh, hope to start MSc in Environmental Management and complete within two years. However, are you able to pause your studies? Um, so, Farah, the you will be given registration for five years um, and you can uh, pace your studies at the pace you want so if you take a number of modules in uh, in may or in the coming february and then having completed those you need to pause uh, and not register for anything for the following year um, that's entirely up to you as long as you get to the end within your five years uh, you have lots of flexibility in how you do that. So the basic answer to your question is yes. Cameron, um, are there opportunities for face-to-face -face time with tutors if we find ourselves able to get to London? Um, so limited, you can sometimes um, see if you're passing through and you'd like to come and visit somebody you can come and do that you won't get one-to-one -one tuition during that time but you can come and put a face to a name uh, and maybe you will have some particular questions that you want to ask we do get students who come through london and say uh, could i meet up with such and such a person and if, and if possible we will do that um, in the same way as and distance learning enables students all over the world to study. Um, both our conveners and our tutors um, are actually quite dispersed around UK. So we have to arrange that on a case by case basis because it's not uh, always the case that they'll be in London when you come through. But anyway, um, again, sedep admin at sas.ac.uk would be the place to put your request and, and we'll try and arrange it. You see how many students enroll each year in MSc Environmental Management, about 25 to 30 each year on that program. Um, as we had that question earlier for Ag Economics, let me tell you that for Sustainable Development, that's our largest program, so 60 to 70 students each year on that, maybe 50 students each year on poverty reduction uh, and then um, probably 30, 25 to 30 on environmental economics, environmental management, 25 or so on agricultural economics each year. Lucille, can we pay in advance for modules we can take later? Um, yes, you can, if that helps you manage your finances uh, better, um, or if your employer is paying and wants to make the payment early, yes, you, uh, you are allowed to do that. Um, so Zuhur, I can't, you've registered and been given an unconditional offer, can I enroll and pay for the two modules I plan to take this May now, do I have to wait for the registration period to end? Zuhur, do you know, I don't actually know the answer to that question, I'm really sorry, but um, if you, again, email sedepadmin at saras.ac.uk, um, they will be able to answer that question for you. Um, I would hope that we're able to help you early, but they will be able to confirm that. Okay, um, i just seen that uh, having been looking at just at your questions throughout, we've now come to half past one, and also we've come to the end of the questions. Um, I hope that has been useful for everybody. I see some people are saying thanks and uh, and logging out. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and if you do have any further questions, let me just repeat one last time. Sedep admin at soas.ac.uk is the email address. 
to put your further questions. And uh, I look forward to interacting with many of you on our programs in due course. Thanks very much. Bye.